Praxis Prepper. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and today we're talking about the Day 7.5 episode of Praxis Prepper Alien Invasion. We're going to talk about some of the discussion points and topics brought up in the episode, and at the very end I'm going to share with you a sneak peek of what's happening next week on the show. Uh, but before any of that, if you haven't seen the Day 7.5 episode, there's a link somewhere around here. You can click on it and find out what we're talking about it before we talk about it. Wait a moment. Okay, we'll jump right in, but the first thing I want to do is thank the people that made today's episode possible. If you've been watching the series, you know that we had a challenge for February to get us to 75% funding uh, in order to release the second episode for February, and so many people stepped up to the plate and made that happen. Thank you all so very much. Uh, those people are Stephen Hunter, uh, Jason Fuchs, uh, John Jay, Scott Whitmore, Brandon Braxton, and Nordic Resilience both upped their pledges to make sure that we made it, Dark Song Wolf, and Bruce Walker, as well as one anonymous person who didn't want me to, you know, necessarily share the name on here, but you know who you are. Thank you very much. Thank you all very uh, much. And thank you to all the people who have been longtime Patreon supporters that are the base of support that is making this, this whole thing possible. If you're not familiar, um, although if you're watching the series, you probably are, but if you're not, the only way I can do this series is by the generous support of people just like yourself for as little as a dollar a month who are supporting this series to keep it going forward. If you want to join them, get access some, to some more behind-the-scenes material, uh, and also help to be able to steer the plot here and there, there's a link down below. You can join, uh, join everyone and uh, keep this series going forward into the future. So, enough blabbing about that. Let's talk about the episode today. So, the main... Uh, topic of the episode uh, is being unprepared for things. Uh, I think it's great uh, in prepping shows to talk about like, here's a prep, here's a prep, here's a prep. Prepping is about preparedness. But I think we all have to acknowledge that no matter how prepared you are, there's always going to be things that you're not going to be prepared for. Uh, and, and that's what this episode is about. Uh, my character, right from the outset of the show, is behind some pretty good concealed cover. Well, maybe it's not the best concealment because <laughs> it gets spotted. But it's good cover. It's a good, solid New England stone wall. And uh, they've got someone running across a field at them. Uh, and they don't. Des they decide not to stand their ground uh, because they have that that really great position. They decide to flee. And there's all sorts of bits and pieces uh, to that uh, that situation. I mean, obviously, my character had a Glock, and the person running across the field had an assault weapon. I, I mean, there's an imbalance there. Also, my character didn't know if there were more more marauders in the town. You know, there was some you know information holes there. My character didn't think those things through, make a mental calculation about what they should do, and then act. They just panicked and they ran. And uh, I think it's really important to think about that ahead of time, to think about where we all have our deficits. Uh, and it's not just in defense and tactics and things like that. You know, I'm always talking about on my channel all the time the idea of the importance of practicing skills uh, ahead of time. <laughs> And I'll be very honest, uh, tactics and um, you know, defensive training is not something I have a lot of training in. I have a few small experiences with it, but beyond that, it's a real hole that I have. Uh, it's difficult for me to get out and do tactic training. I'm a single dad. Free time is not something I have a ton of. Uh, so it's a hole that I have in my, in my preps. Uh, I know from other things that I have progressed and I am better than I used to be. Uh, for example, wild plant identification. When I first started, it was a lot of work. I, you know, I had the book and I, I looked through the books a lot and I'd get out and you know, I could identify things, but it's slow. I had to think about it a lot. Now that I've been doing it for a long time, uh, when I go out on a walk, it's kind of like I'm at a grocery store. It's like, oh, there's food, there's food, there's food, there's food I wouldn't want to eat, but there's food over there, there's some more food. Uh, it's, it's automatic. And that's the way with so many different skills. And it's important to think up, up front about where are your deficits, especially deficits that are involved with situations where you are going to maybe be in a panic, be afraid for your life or your, your survival over the next couple of moments. Those are the kind of play, uh, situations that can really turn out very badly for someone if you haven't done some practice ahead of time. And again, I say that as someone who has some homework to do of my own in that, in that regard. Do you have... Uh, elements of your preps where you feel like you really need to put more work in? Do you, do you have experiences where you have put that extra work in and you feel so much better on the other side that you would like to share that with people? Please do in the comments below. I know from, from hearing from people that so many people enjoy reading the comment sections below all these videos because you guys have such great ideas you share with other people and they are so valuable to, um, to everyone in the community. And that's what it's all about is sharing these ideas, getting them out, 
you know, I've put my, I put myself out there that I feel that that's the best thing that we can do is to share these ideas with people so that in collapse situations, people are not freaking out so much that they're a little bit more prepared and that ha helps people to get through a lot of disasters because most disasters aren't Mad Max anyway. I, most disasters are smaller things and most of the bad things that happen from disasters are as a result of people being unprepared, not, a, not as a result of the disaster itself. And that is an idea that one of the commenters, I forget who you were, um, that is an idea that a, a commenter had posted on one of the uh, uh, recent videos that I'd posted on the topic and I thought it was a really articulate way of putting it out there. Just the simple fact that it's not always Mad Max and most of the problems we have from disasters is from people being unprepared, not from the disaster itself. So to get more people prepared is going to reduce all those problems later on. That's my feeling. I know I go on and on about it. I'm sorry. Blah, 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 blah. Let's get to the clip from next week. Um, uh, not next week, uh, next month. It's going to be the first Friday in March is uh, when this episode is going to come up. This is the day eight episode coming up. I've uh, mentioned to you guys, it's a monster. Day eight is a half an hour of content. It's split across day eight and day 8.5. So each one's about 15 minutes long. Put a lot of work on this one. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I wonder what I'll show as a clip. We'll see. That's it. Thanks for watching. This way I can really quickly assess the situation. And it's important that you, oh, something's going off. It's the one by the big pine tree. That's, that's down that way. Okay, uh, it's freaking freezing. I'm gonna grab the pistol and uh, I guess put a coat on and check it out. I just got an alert off of the uh, the sensor down in the valley by the large tree and I'm gonna check it out. That is the one I was thinking, you know, might have been prone to false alarms, but uh, you know, I gotta presume that it's real, so. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.